Well, now that we know a little bit about what co-housing is, let's go and look at a real live one that's already in existence here in Portland. The uh, Peninsula Park Commons is a converted 1950s-style apartment complex with two brand-new energy-efficient buildings being added to this co-housing venture. They held an, ho an open house recently, and Julio Castillo went to check it out and talk to some of the potential residents. Mm -hmm. Hi, Eli. Hey, Julio. Hi, today we're here with Eli Spivak of Orange Plot LLC at their current open house for Peninsula Park Commons, a new co-housing development currently underway. Thanks for coming out to take a look sure, at Eli, it. Sure, Eli, thanks. I was living with a group of friends in the house I owned, sort of a group house, and I loved living that way. Um, but as I got a little bit older, it was kind of like I might like to have a little more privacy, and so I approached, um, talked with a friend of mine, and he was in a similar situation, and the timing was right, so we looked around for courtyard apartments that we might be able to buy and live in, um, and have our own front doors, but also live near friends we want to hang out with and just have impromptu fun all the time. We bought this place, and originally we were just going to make all the units individual condominium units where, um, with a shared courtyard, and we decided through that process that, you know, if we didn't sell one of the units, then that could be a unit that everybody could share and it would be a chance for us to um, just see what happens with the space and to do that we had to raise the prices on the units all by a little bit like 12 grand and in hindsight that was just a great decision um, because the common unit that we created gets heavily used by um, mommy's groups by out-of-town visitors big screen tv so we don't have to have our own tvs um, hiking book collection. So you're able to share resources and, and, and right. kind of cut down on costs here and there. Yeah, it's just an inexpensive way to live and a great place for us to get out of our homes and go in the common unit. And also, as you can see, it becomes sort of a bridge between the first phase of the development and where I'm standing now, the second phase, where we have another courtyard. And um, and that's how I learned about co-housing. Then I started realizing people have been doing this for a long time. I'm Eli. I ran Marklin. Nice to meet you. Nice to meet you too. Jim, nice to meet you. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Nice to you again. Nice to see you again. I'm Mona. Ona. Mona. Mona. I'm Hi. With Markland. With Markland. Great. Yes. Markland. Mona. <laughs> Mona and Markland. Welcome. I'll show you what we got here. That's new construction? This is all new construction, yeah. There used to be two garages with seven parking stalls. Place. So this is a common area for indoor outdoor space. Um, this is a. This is going to be for bike parking. Every development I work on has got a, a sort of a theme, and this one's definitely the, the bikey the bike theme. Base. Yeah. Like all these trail st supports? Yeah. People don't realize they're made of bikes. Is it only bicyclists really? that can it's, tell? Maybe bicyclists <laughs> can tell. Pretty obvious, yeah. yeah, but yeah, I think the, the things up top are awesome. That one, when it gets to the afternoon, to get the sun through the oh, stained wow. glass, oh, it makes yeah, it look yeah. really good. That's why that's why we picked the the west facing gable end for that. You can come on up here. I'll show you in, inside one. My goal with the company is to try and launch new forms of community-oriented housing in the Portland area, ideally within biking distance of my house. And I like to do projects where the units are small. I think the greenest way we can build housing is to live in small, smaller homes than usual. And I think the way to do that <laughs> comfortably and more fun is to have small homes and also have spaces that people can get out of their homes into. So that can be common spaces, interior or out. Um, I also like to use really sustainable building practices, salvage building materials. Um, if there's existing structures, I try and leave them up and incorporate them into the project. That's all from a tree in Vancouver fell down. Yeah, it was our old tree. Yeah. Hold on, which one? The one on Oster's Row. Are you serious? Yeah. That's so touching you guys. Wow. We did. We did. Yeah. Nice job. Yeah. I'd seen it done one house on the East Coast when I was visiting family. All the Call it live edge trim. I knew I wanted to to do live like mill up tree, and I mentioned to a friend who's an arborist, and he just happened to have like gotten the call on this tree in Vancouver to wow. come, and he said, "Well, Eli, if you show up there with a trailer or flatbed, I'll we can just, just they're, they're gonna have a crane out there anyway. They'll just drop it on my my rig instead." So he put it on there, and then he uh, we drove it out to um, this guy I know in Corbett who has a mill, a, a sawmill, mm -hmm. um, and I'd worked with him on one project before, so he milled it up, and then, like, I get to meet all the great wood processing people in Oregon, because then, like, there's a guy out in Silver Falls who has a kiln, 
because um, they have to dry it in the kiln for a couple right. months. So he went down there, and he also got another one, maple, one, one more maple tree because um, there wasn't quite enough wood in that first one. <laughs> Underneath this wood flooring, you see there's um, inch and a half layer of gypcrete, which is sort of concrete without the gravel in it, and flowing through that are tubes of um, Wurzbow piping with hot water can flow through there. So the heating source for this unit is under the floor. It's called in-floor radiant heat. And the second floor in the bathroom under the tiles is also in-floor radiant heat. That feels good. Instead of having to get out of the shower and be like, yay, yay. Um, Each unit has its own um, tankless water heater, which just is just about this big. And the water coming into that tankless water heater comes from a storage tank, which is a solar water tank. Um, which is heated up by the panels on the roof. It's preheated. So it's preheated, yeah. So if the, sol- if the water in the storage tank is at 130 degrees, then when you run your shower, the, the tankless water heater doesn't, doesn't even have to fire. It's, it's fired by natural gas, but if the water is already hot going into it, it just sends it right on through. Um, and for the in-floor radiant heat, it's the same thing. The water um, gets spurted in there to keep the temperature in the floor at like 80 degrees. And um, if the water is already hot, then the natural gas doesn't have to fire for that either. Two of the units are plumbed in different ways. The tube bedding unit, the tankless water heater, is actually on the outside of the building. So it's actually, it's just like two feet by one foot. Like the water that goes into the floor, it does have to fire for the water to go on the floor, so you don't get it from the water heater. Um, all the potable water does go through the, um, all the water for like the faucets and stuff goes to the hot water heater. It's actually, they're different loops, actually. The, the water in the, in the floor, is at yeah, sort of like 80 degrees. It's a little too too chilly that you want for your faucet. But the source of the water in both cases comes from the the, okay. the solar water tank. The three bedroom units are pre-wired for um, for um, solar electric heat, which I hope we'll do. And we barely have enough roof space, frankly, on this roof to do it. It's going to be a stretch, but we, we have just enough space for it. The other is no problem because there's only one unit there. But you can make provisions so that energy costs down the road are are going to be are going to be low. This is the kind of fun spot we had, was to... Like you can't use salvage windows in new construction because they don't have any um, insulative content. So, so it's a sun porch. So it's a sun porch. Like, so the doors are insulated and you need to cut. Yep. So we did this and we do use um, low, VOC, low VOC paint. I avoid vinyl windows and I can't say I'll never do one because <laughs> they're, they're so much less expensive than fiberglass, but so far I've managed to just do fiberglass. Um, and the things I focus on the most probably are the heating and the mm-hmm. insulation. I love experimenting, and I love the idea of housing that pulls together uh, people who um, who want to live their values, and part of that is living um, in a community where they can share resources rather than in a single home. Even if that home's super energy efficient, all the great green stuff, um, I like to have a chance where people can um, share the resources also. And I like to do more projects where they can be really affordable as well. I could do that because the units are really small and they're sharing lots with other homes. And the next project to have after this one will be up at Woolsey Corner in um, New Columbia where there'll be eight units and that will also be affordable family housing, at that time in partnership with the Portland Development Commission and the Land Trust. Um, so those are a couple of ways that I try and make the homes to be affordable because I don't have a lot of money to buy a house and a lot of people in the city don't. Um, and it might be possible to sell homes like this, you know, whatever the market would bid for it. But um, at some point, that's not really what I want my market to be. Good, good, good time. Can you just play some stock notes? What do you all think of co-housing? I think it's a great idea. It's great for Portland. It is. Yeah. That's a great way to have some, uh, some you know, kind of density without making it uh, the, 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 the condo kind of crowded world that we don't want. Hey. I'm gonna jump in. What do you think of this idea? Yeah, they're very good. Mm-hmm. <laughs> I like this, uh, you know, floor plan. Yeah. You think you might like to live in a place like this? Yeah. And the, actually, you know, when I look at the price, it's not that high. Right. So it's very reasonable. So. Yeah. And what about the idea of uh, living in a communal sort of setting? Well, yeah. You yeah. know, you live in the city. That's a lot of people share this. You know. Yeah. The same stuff. My goal is to help groups 
um, build the capacity to do more co-housing in, in Portland. And I know that I don't have the time to do as much as there's demand to happen here. So I'm hoping other people learn how to do it. Eli, thank you so much for showing us around today. We really appreciate that. We hope to see more projects like this in the future and we'll definitely keep in touch. Thanks so much for coming out to take a look. I'm Julio Castilla, bringing you the tools to be sustainable today. Mm -hmm.